want to find out more about this community called yeah group. coaching is about just about coaching there's marketing there's social media there's literally so many different things you have to be organized i've still got people that don't believe in me investing in yourself is one of the best things you will ever do if you can spend money taking you can girls spend out, taking girls out if you can spend that you can definitely invest that same amount of money in yourself so you're like all in you know the relationships happening all in toxic environments but like for yeah. me i didn't really know about myself at the time it shouldn't just be about your physique and the way you look from a man as well changed his complete life in six months how special is that to have a community big shout out to our sponsor the cake solution they've got vegan vegetarian and eggless options some of the finest cakes in the whole of the united kingdom all of these cakes are far too delicious to even consider missing out on check out the cake solution do exactly what i'm gonna do get yourself a bite no it, it, it. Oh wow, one take, you know, that better be decent. <laughs> yes, welcome to A-Band Specialist Show. I'm here with Heather today. I'm very grateful, so thank you for joining me. Thank you for having Cast, me. Yeah, no. Appreciate Cast, it. Yeah, I appreciate it as well. Where to start, really? You've got the cast, what's going on? <laughs> Quite obvious, like. Yeah, so literally last Wednesday, I was performing. So I don't know if you've heard of Breaking Convention. It's basically, it's a dance company in London. It's usually at Saddle as well, but they do like a UK tour. Mm. So they were going around to work, like they came to Nottingham, uh, which is my hometown. And yeah, was performing, matinee show. Slipped on something on stage and then she felt straight on my wrist. Evening matinee show. Matinee is the afternoon. Afternoon's my Afternoon, friend. yeah. So it was like 2.30. Literally... I was only performing once, slipped on something, fell straight on my wrist like that. And it's broke, which is great. So yeah. And then obviously I couldn't perform in the evening. So that was a bit sad. Yeah. But it's just one of those things, I guess. We overcome it. Overcome it. But you've uh, been a bit of a roller coaster, emotional roller coaster ride. Right, yeah, it? like literally like the first few days I was obviously fuming because I was like, well, this is my career. Mm. I can't dance for what, four to six weeks. Mm. I can't train in the gym properly for four to six weeks. I can't help my clients film any videos for four to six weeks. I can't teach for four to six weeks. So I was like, this is like my whole life at the minute just kind of stopped. And then I spoke to my brother and he was like, stop feeling sorry for yourself. Um, I wasn't like obviously feeling massively sorry for myself. I was just having a few days where I just needed to kind of process it being out. But yeah, then yeah, 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 yeah. now, I'm in a better headspace. I've trained in the gym twice this week, done leg days. That's um, cool. Probably do a, back up. do a couple more. Yeah. Do a couple more leg days. I think my legs yeah, are going to yeah. be huge at the end of this. <laughs> <laughs> legs and glutes. I'm training yeah. them for the next four weeks. <laughs> yin and yang, innit? So yeah, no, hundred percent. That's it. So like, where do I, where do we start? You know, when it comes to comes to Heather, right? So like you say, you're dancing and you're in the gym. You're helping people film, all of these things. That's what I've understood. That's what anyone can understand. If they click on your social media, if anyone knows you personally, we know Heather, mm -hmm. coach, personal trainer, professional yeah. dancer, masseuse, therapist. Yeah, sports massage therapist. Sports massage therapist. Yeah. So all these things, would that be correct to say? Yeah, definitely correct. Anything I've missed? Um, no. I think that's me at the minute. A lot of mindset work, but yeah, that kind of comes with everything. Mindset, yeah. And would you, like the coaching, is that like a sort of confidence, confidence yeah. coaching? Yeah, so yes, I am, like I have been a personal trainer, um, fully qualified, and now I mainly do online. Um, so online coaching and something I feel like is so important in this day and age, in both men and women, is actually feeling confident within yourself. So my kind of coaching process, I do specialise in fat loss and muscle gain, but confidence for me is like, that's, I want you to be losing body fat mm. and gaining muscle purely to feel confident. If you're not feeling confident within yourself, then the gym is like a perfect way to feel that confidence. Mm. And I think it's something like most, especially girls who come to me or women who come to me, um, are very insecure, feel really rubbish about themselves, lacking self-confidence, lacking like mindset work whether that's due to like work, the environment they're in, relationship, the body, whatever it is. And a lot of people will kind of break down to me on their 
consultation calls. Swear. Yeah, a lot of them will cry. It's emotional. Yeah, of course. And obviously it gets me emotional because I feel like I've been there. And I think, I don't cry on the call, don't worry. But um, that's my job to like get them to feel like confident again. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So it's kind of, you can use your own stories and you can, I, I can really like resonate with them, I feel. So yeah, confidence for me is like the main thing. One of the biggest things. Yeah. Was, it spans across the personal training, spans yeah. across the, do you t coach people with the dancing as well? Or? Yeah, yeah, or I do. do. Yeah. So when I was living in Nottingham, um, so I moved to London in January. Yeah. Uh, when I lived in Nottingham, I was doing quite a bit of teaching. Um, so from really the age, usually it'd be old, like, I say older girls, <laughs> like 14 plus. Um, but I'd have tea up to talk kids as well. Um, and something I do teach a lot is heels. Um, for me, heels brings out like another level of confidence. What is what what is heels? Like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a complete novice. I'm a blank canvas. And for the benefit Love of the that. audience, <laughs> yeah, the listeners as well, heels, like yeah. I immediately thought of tap dancing, but that's not. That's completely No, so right. tap dancing I have done. Tap dancing okay. was like sure. one of my <laughs> okay. I'm like I've done it all. Multifaceted. Um, yeah, no, do you know what you have to be though? Like in this industry yeah. you have to be so versatile. Yeah, versatile. And I feel like I started doing tap, but tap helps with like house, like it helps with a lot of different styles. Um but I don't really do tap anymore. But yeah, it is a good one. But heels, heels. is yeah, heels is like it's literally in a stiletto heel. I know it sounds like, so that's, that's literally what it is. Yeah, and it's a yeah. very specific kind of, it's a, it is a style on its own. You can obviously incorporate, like you can see a lot of heels dancers that incorporate Vogue and like whacking, which is a lot of like arm movement. Mm. Um, and you've got different types. You can see like technique in heels. And then you can also see like Beyonce vibe and it's like full out in a heel, that's like commercial. True. So that's basically what heels is, but it's, to me, it's about kind of empowering. I say women. Literally, my one of my best friends who's gay, he also dances in heels. So it's yeah. not really just for women. It's just dancers in general who want to yeah, yeah, yeah. dance in a heel. Um, <laughs> but it's for me, it's about empowering that and kind of making you feel sexy, but without it being sexual. Yeah, because my thing yeah. with heels, you just see like girls at the end of the night, heels in one hand. <laughs> yeah, like, no, the heels not are that. not doing anyone any justice. No, like. no, definitely not that. I mean... Yeah. I may have done that back in the day, but I could never know. Okay. That's not me. I could, I could, do you know what it is? They're so, my feet are so strong now. I don't think I could go out on a night out and not be able to... I can keep them on. Like, that's how it should be. Yeah, no. Do no, you know no, what I mean? No. From heels dancing. So, yeah. That's it. So We're laughing. What? Um, so you got drawn to the heels and stuff like that. Was it always... How did you start off with the, with the dancing and how did you move to what you're doing now? Because, yeah. yeah, there's got to be a bit of a journey, like a progression... Heels empowerment, like well, how did we get to that stage? Yeah, a long probably journey. Def yeah, it's definitely a long journey. I think I started ballet when I was four. No, ballet. I was just before I was three. Just before I was four, so I was wow. three. Wow, that's early. Yeah, um, my mum said it was about a month before I had my fourth birthday. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I had my first show when Do I was four. Do you think that was you that was saying that you want to go to ballet, or was that from the top down, mum? I Ever. don't know, you know. Need to find that out. Yeah, I'm going to have to ask her because she's always said, like, I've always loved it. Mm. And I loved it when I was doing it. I was always, like, she said literally from the first show that I did, I was so confident, like, I was just smiling, literally, I was four years old mm. on stage. So, like, she's always said that to me. So, wow. I think it was probably part of her putting me forward for ballet and then obviously realising, like, when I was actually doing ballet... I started then doing other styles because I was loving it. Mm. Um, and I went to a school called Sandra Taylor School of Dance, which is in West Bridgeford. In um, and then I started doing tap. <laughs> then I started doing, eventually I went into like commercial, which is like what you see in like music videos, kind of Sweet. like full out kind of jazz, jazz styles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, musical theatre, went into like just kind of all the little bits and bobs. Like all of the styles, oh, really. Done a bit of theatre as well. Yeah, I did a bit I of music theatre. Yeah, thing, really. <laughs> done a bit of singing. Okay. Done a bit of. Used to play piano and flute. Oh sweet. <laughs> yeah, but I honestly wish I hadn't quit those. Like I quit when I was like fourteen, oh, fifteen. Mm. And yeah. I'm not usually a quitter, but I did quit hey, instruments. What made you throw the towel in? 
Yeah, do you know what? I think it was just that age. You know, when you're yeah, was turning it, 14, 14, 15, yeah, about yeah, 14, yeah. 15. Other all I was happened. bothered about was living life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably boys going yeah, to yeah, yeah. little house parties. Do you know what I mean? Like just, and I remember like even like ballet and stuff, I did stop for a few years. Okay. Um, And I obviously got to that age and I was like, no, I just want to have a break. <laughs> um, no, fair enough. Um, Obviously, if you've been doing it your whole life and you've yeah. been, you know, teenage, adolescence, there's a big world out there to go discover. Everyone's partying. There's a lot of distractions. You want to go and live a little yeah. as well. So how did you come back to it all then? Yeah, so... What drew you back? I think it was when I was in sixth form. Okay. Well, I kind of know this. This is one of the reasons why I feel like I keep going. Okay. Um, yeah. I was in sixth form. I did maths, psychology... French and biology. Sweet. And I found them really hard. <laughs> Some, I was about to say serious subjects. Yeah, Math, I found psychology, them. Psychology, French and biology. Parlez-vous le français? Yeah, uh, un peu. Yeah, that's what I've got. Un I can't petit remember peu. any of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I, lo- like, I did love French, mm. but I just didn't like the theory. I liked speaking it, that was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then psychology, I love psychology. That's why I kind of loved speaking about people's mindset and like yeah. mind and okay. but it was just something I it was either that or dance I wanted to go into. Mm. Maths I was good at, but my maths teacher said to me uh, when I said I wanted to go to dance college, he was like, What are you gonna do with dance? And I was wow. like Bastard. So I think like stuff like that kind of stays with me now. Yeah. Because I'm like, how are you like yeah, how are you yeah. gonna tell me what I'm gonna do with dance? <laughs> do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, what was his name? Um, I don't want to out him like that. No, he was it was called Mr. Peel. So yeah. I remember he probably he, had your best interest mm. at heart, perhaps. Mr. Potentially, Peel. but he kind of I remember he mentioned Leicester University. He was like, okay. "Oh, you can go to the Montford Leicester the University." Like a, it's quite a sporty university, I think. Oh wait, no, no, yeah. no. Wait. Well, he know. that's Loughborough. No, that's um, Loughborough. Yeah, yeah, man. yeah, yeah. But he was like, "You can go to the Montford yeah, yeah. Leicester University." And you don't need to be in a red, what are they called? Red brick? Red brick. Red, yeah, brick. red brick. And I was yeah. like, so you're telling me I'm not clever enough to go to red brick and you're also telling me not to do dance. So it was kind of, it was just a bit like, oh, why don't you go and do this? But I think like for me, I was at, I had to redo um, biology because I didn't do very well. So that was in my last year and I just thought, no, I'm going to go do something that I love doing. Mm. Then I went to dance college at 19. Sweet. So 27 now. Nice. Went to dance college at 19 and I was there for like three years. So I did a year at the Liverpool Institute for Performing Arts and then I did two years at Rare Studio Liverpool, which is, it wasn't a degree, it was more just like intense, like training for two years. Um, and there, because it was so like commercial based, which is like, like I said, full out, um, the dancers there are absolutely incredible. Like... When you Some say commercial really based, it's like, is that going into television, going into Yeah, music so videos? a lot of like music videos. Do you videos. think that you might end up? Yeah, you know, definitely. And I think I've always wanted to go into music videos, go into television, go on tour nice. one day. Nice. And I was watching dancers leave Rare. What does that mean? Doing that. So Rare is that, Rare is what it was called, Rare Studio. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rare yeah. yeah cool, cool. Um, sorry, I always say it like Rare. Like, so used to no, you didn't mention it though, my bad. Um, that's okay. And then I was watching dancers literally leave at like 17, 18. Mm. Obviously, they were younger than me. Booking tours at that age. Wow. And I was like... Yeah, pressure? Yeah, pressure, pressure. But also, I think what I realised, I was... I went from a dance school that I may have seen myself as being one of the better ones. Mm. And then I went to college and I was like, I'm humbled. I'm an underdog. And that really like... That was such an amazing thing for me because I feel like I've always yeah. been an underdog and I think that's a good thing. Mm. So that's kind of when I started wanting to train like these amazing dancers that were going on tour mm. and like booking these jobs. Like some of them are my friends and they're, they're amazing people, but they're also like, I still look up to them now. I'm like, you're amazing. Um, wow. And they're very good at heels and that's kind of where I started learning heels. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. yeah. Makes sense. And then now I'm like teaching myself and want to just explore it a bit more. So, yeah. Okay. That must be, um, I have quite a lot of dedication to say I'm going to teach myself as well, like yeah. focus and stuff like that. You do you do go to classes though as well, but obviously you've got to take yourself to the classes. No one's forcing you to go there. You're not, a, you're not following a syllabus. You're not in a college or anything like that. No. So, yeah, for me, this is such a good, good, a good topic because mm. I preach this quite a lot. I don't know how you can 
teach something mm. that you're not a master at. A hundred percent. I hear that. Do you know what I mean? Some, you have to keep it humble and be like, look, I'm not a master yet. I'm you have learning. To. I'm learning and learn with me. Yeah. And that's cool. Yeah. But like you said, how can you teach something that you're not a master at? So is that your mission? Now? Yeah, I think because like I think, do you know what it is? For me, I'm definitely not, I would, like, I'm a good level, I'm an advanced level, but there's people better than me. Mm. And I always, anytime I get, I will go and learn from, like, I'm missing heels training right now. I'm missing dancing because I want to learn from, like, other people. Yeah. Like, and I'm watching other people learn. And I'm like, oh, I want to be doing that. But I just think I can't physically teach heels if I don't, if I'm not trying to learn my best version of my heels training. Like, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to teach heels until I'm 100% at that level, like yeah, I have to yeah. keep pushing myself to be better at teaching for my generation or however. Mm. Um, so yeah, and I feel like it's such a, you, I would never teach a hip hop class, for example. I would never teach, I, I have done hip hop, but only really for like the past like year and a half. Mm. Um, and I would, I'm not saying never in the future, maybe one day, but right now I would not teach a hip hop class because it's not something I specialize in, or I would say I'm, I've mastered in a way. Yeah, no, Do you know? yeah. And I kind of, I stay humble and I stay in my lane, in a way. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. It makes sense, definitely. So, yeah, I feel like that's my kind of mindset in terms of teaching. Being disciplined and enough to, like, you know, go out and learn something properly. So, yeah. how, how did the personal training come into it? I imagine, like, when you're doing dancing, there's a certain amount of fitness to it as well. Is that what led you to yeah. the gym, training? When, yeah. When did that become a part of your life? Like, when did gym, yeah, PT, personal training and training others, when did yeah. that enter into it? Because do you have to go to the gym as a dancer? Is there like It's a good question. Deadlifting yeah. in a dance studio or what? It's a really good question because when I was in dance college, I only ever went to the gym when I was back home for summer. Okay. Yeah. Only, only ever when I went back home for summer. It was like a personal... Yeah, okay. as I needed to keep up my fitness, I needed to keep my energy up, I needed to do core work, I needed to do cardio in my breaks. Whereas when I was at dance college, when I say to you, it was so intense. Uh, Lindsay, the director at Rare Studio, she was, um, she she's actually seen me through my whole college days. Like, I'm so grateful for her. Shout out, Lindsay. Yeah, shout out, Lindsay. Shout out Lindsay. Um, she used to make us go for runs in the morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'd start at eight, half eight can't remember the exact time, eight, half eight, do the hardest body con class body for about con. 30 minutes. What's body con? So body con, body conditioning. Body so conditioning. cardio, after we've done a run, cardio, core work, arm strength. Do they have like weights? Leg strength. Like mini weights? In no the, weights. It was all like, like body, body weight. weight. Wow. Like I still remember the warm up now. Yeah. So when I've taught people in classes, sometimes I will go and do like an, like, Either do the same one and say, like, this is what I used to do in college, or I'll adapt it slightly to my own thing. But we used to do that and then do a really deep stretch. And that was the first, like, 45 minutes of my day. Mm. Every day, Monday to Thursday. Had Friday, Saturday, Sunday off. Um, then you'd go into classes. We'd had five classes in that day. So maybe ballet in the morning, tap, or whatever it was. Three commercial class. Like, we used to have commercial every single day. So, like, full out or hip hop, commercial hip hop. Mm. Um, contemporary we had we had amazing literally amazing teachers both at Lipper and Rare Studio um, and I think that's kind of where my fitness got involved because I was like how I wouldn't have been able to get through those days if it wasn't for those body con classes yeah, yeah, yeah. in the morning and like my conditioning you feel the benefits of staying fit yeah. staying healthy translates into your yeah into your, into your trade or your what you're doing. Yeah, 100%. And I think it Just was... physical, mental, endorphins and shit like that? Or yeah, do you know what? Both. Mm. Um, definitely both. I think for me, exercise, whether that's dance or fitness, it shouldn't just be about your physique and the way you look. Because I never used to really... I was just dancing. I was losing. I was tiny. Like if you looked at pictures, I was like just so petite. Mm. Lean as hell. Like just so, te uh, so petite. What, for me, it wasn't really just about my physique. I was just, it was more my energy and like what, what it made me feel like, my mental health. Um, and even like now when I'm coaching, I'm like, it shouldn't just be about, yes, you should, you want to have physique goals, that's fine. Because for me, I like to present myself and 
for me, I feel good. But also it's about my mental health, like releasing your endorphins, making yourself feel good. Um, it doesn't need to be an intense hit session. It can be literally walking. It can be going for a hike with your friend. It can be doing a weight training session, a light, even a light session. You're going to get something out of it. I wouldn't say do that all the time, but you're going to get something out of it. It's going to make you feel good for the rest of the day. Like start your day with exercise. Yeah. I think that's why I've always been a morning gym person. Um, probably because of dance. I feel like it's kind of just embedded in me. I need to start my day with that. <laughs> Yeah. I was going to say that because you seem to be someone that's quite focused on, as you say, confidence, mm -hmm. mindset is a big thing. Like you, pra you practice what you preach, definitely. Yeah. So have you always been that way? Like, you know, you see, we take it back to baby Heather, mm. three years old ballet. Has it been like a, a journey where you've realised oh, shit, I need to, you know, I need to practice what I preach. I need to manifest. I need to do mindset. I need to do affirmations and stuff like that. Or yeah. At like what yeah. stage in your life, like from baby have or doing a ballet, when did you realise that these things were beneficial to you? Like waking up in the morning, doing positive yeah. things, energy. Please enlighten us with that one. It's a good question because I think some people would probably think it's always been in me, yeah. but it definitely hasn't. I feel like people look at people that yeah. are like that and think that they've always been that way. Yeah. No, I, honestly, because you do. Like, sometimes you think, oh, they must have always been like that. They were yeah. grown up like that. They were born yeah. like that. My mum and dad never did anything like that. Yeah. Like, never. Um, for me, I think it was... So I, I trained in Liverpool. Mm. Um, I, I said, I said, didn't I? Rare. Um, <laughs> yeah, rare, yeah, at Rare. Out, um, trained in Liverpool. But I made friends with such amazing girls. We're all Scousers, a lot of them. Mm. Uh, literally the best people Scousers, you'll ever meet. Scousers, Scousers. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. some of the best people you'll ever come across. So nice, humble, very spiritual. Mm. And that's like when I think something twisted, it, twisted, something changed in me. Um, Flick switched. Yeah, no, yeah. honestly, flip a switch. Mm. Um, and I think, <laughs> um, yeah, me just in song mode. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like some of my friends, like I'm still really good friends with them now. Uh -huh. uh, some of my bestest friends are literally my scouts that I made friends with. Mm. Um, one of them bought me a rose quartz bracelet okay. off a holiday once. And it was when I was going through a bit of heartbreak, oh. you know, you know how it goes. It's how it goes. Um, and rose quartz is, is a crystal that's like, it's a Taurus. It's actually for Tauruses and I'm a Taurus anyway. Okay. Um, and it's also like, it attracts love and just like abundance and just happiness. So that was the first crystal she gave me. And it was like a little bracelet. Eventually that snapped and I was really, I was like, why is it snapped? But she was like, you don't need it anymore. Oh, okay. Nice. I've still got the little crystals, just just on my little bedside table. Yeah. Um, but like yeah. A lot of scarces are on this crystal spirituality, you know. I met a couple of them that's like, on the crystals. They are. Yeah, so is it is, is there definitely a thing to it then, yeah? 100%. Like, I know people might be like, oh, it's so, I've, it's a rock. Like, some yeah. of my friends are like, oh, it's just a rock. Yeah, I'm like, but it's yeah. not. It's I've been bit. that guy. I've been that guy. Like, mm. it's a rock, man. Get over, the, get over the rock. But now, at this stage in life, like I say, I feel like I'm becoming more, you know, open-minded. And I'd like to learn. I'm a very curious guy. So, yeah, I'd really like to learn. Now I'm hearing about the Taurus yeah. and the heartbreak. Stars, like, no, 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 the, the rock, rose crystal helped yeah, rose with the heartbreak crystal. and stuff like that. So after it snapped, then what, you didn't need it anymore? And... Well, apparently you don't need it. Yeah, if yeah. you lose a crystal or if it snaps or something like that, you okay. apparently you don't need it anymore. Positive way of looking at things. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Which is, is nice because I actually lost, um, I lost a ring the other day. I didn't lose shit. the ring, I lost a crystal out of it. Oh, shit. And it was from my best friends and that was an aquamarine one, which is like for your throat chakra. Okay. And I lost it literally just... I don't know why, because it was tight. Like, it wasn't like it was loose. Yeah. And I was just thought, oh, it's fine. Don't I didn't need, need it. Don't need I'm obviously it voicing my opinion enough. I hear that. Um, but yeah, like, I think, like, literally just since that, since that first crystal, obviously I started delving into it and just going into, like, crystals and, like, learning about... Um, don't get me wrong, I'm still not... Like, if anyone asks on this, I'm not I a can't teach you, I'm not a master. I can't teach you, like, I'm learning. learning. Yeah, yeah, I would yeah, not yeah, be yeah. able to tell you what every single crystal means, yeah, et cetera. Yeah. I've, I've just been, I've been recently looking into it as well, so I'm enjoying this conversation. Yeah. Like six, six. And I think now you've, now you've done it, you'll, you'll start noticing other things. 
I think colours just, mean things now. I'm like, oh, that yeah. Colour means that now. Colours mean things. Yeah, You'll yeah, start yeah. getting like signs from the universe, and like yeah. I think that's how it started happening. I was just getting signs, um, and like even now, like I still get signs, and I definitely think it's my angels. But I never used to be spiritual. So, yeah. yeah. So where does the affirmations and manifestations? Yeah, sorry, I've connect? completely gone no, off. No, 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 it's cool. Don't worry, I got a track. <laughs> I'm cool. We, we got the track completely of it. So, no, it's, ta- it's, it's it's related because the yeah. spiritual side of things is related to you becoming this you know, confident person, you're manifesting things and yeah. mindset is key and you're doing affirmations. But obviously, baby Heather wasn't mm. doing these things. Yeah. We went to the dance school, we're chilling with the rare, with the scarces, doing the, you know, a bit of spirituality. And when did the mindset stuff and the affirmation and where did you learn about it? When did you learn that it works for you? Do you recommend it to clients or do you not shove it down people's throats or what? How to... So, yeah. A lot of questions good, in there. No, it's a really me. good question. Um... Affirmations, I try and share on my story every single day. Yeah. Um, and pe- that's why I've got an affirmation on here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because it's something that I just feel like, you know, the more you speak into the universe, in fact, it's not I think, it's like, I know. know. The more you speak into the universe, good things or like positive things, whether it's affirmations, whether it's stuff you... Well, affirmations can be either like, for example, I am beautiful. <laughs> that's one affirmation. You can yeah. also have an affirmation that's like, I am successful and grateful for things around me. Like, there's two different things. It can either be about yourself, like, you, what you look like, or it can be about, like, things that are going to happen in your life. Um, and for me, like, speaking that into the universe, it brings your energy back up. There's, we're all on an energy wavelength, like, yeah. frequency. Like, if you're speaking high frequency, if you have a life of high vibrational things added to it, and speaking to the universe, high vibrational things and positivity, you're going to come back the universe is going to bring you back so much more positivity. Mm. So I don't I don't uh, rub it in people's faces. And with clients, I don't say you need to do affirmations every day. Sorry, okay, okay. Because I'm not a mindset coach. I'm not qualified to, like, coach people's mindset. But I think, well, I'm, again, I'm, I kind of know that my coaching does help people's mindset because mm. I kind of, I embed it a little bit. And I'll say, like, do you journal? Um, do you listen to podcasts? Like, like, even just like listening to things like this, like you resonate with people, do you know what I mean? So mm. affirmations, journaling, um, podcasts, taking, meditation. Taking care of the body. Yeah, just taking care of your body and like really going into like that energy space and not thinking, going into your like subconscious mind, I guess, and not think, uh, no, conscious mind, sorry, because um, we're always in our subconscious mind. I feel like we're always just living for the external factors. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where the affirmations came from. And I guess I just do them every day now. Just, it's just kind of, in, yeah, embedded in my life. Since, <laughs> since, since college yeah. is thing now. No, that is big. That is big. Literally. Have you got an example, like, of something that you've manifested? Because I, I was asking my friend here as mm. well. And he said a lot of people believe that there's no manual for manifestation. And in terms of podcasts, I listened to a guy called... Alex Hormozy, he's like an mm. entrepreneur, he's in the fitness space as well. Yeah. Him and his his other half, Layla Hormozy, I think, he said he doesn't do the morning routines, he doesn't do the affirmations, mm. but that's only if it becomes a hindrance to your goals. Mm. So a lot of people think that they're not necessary, but have you personally got a story that you can share with us where yeah. you've managed to manifest something? In your life, or if you, if you want, if you want, you don't have to share it. But yeah, cool. definitely. Yeah. Um, I think the first manifestation was so when I went to Rare Studio. This is the first thing. Mm. Um, they offer scholarships to like train in like New York, LA, London, mm-hmm. whatever it kind of is. Dance college. If you go to a dance college, um, definitely manifested that. And I think that was kind of the time where I started journaling and saying like what I wanted from life. And when I journal, like, I'll write it, like, five times. Okay, I've seen you do yeah. that. And, uh, yeah. I might I've, get on it now after this, you know. You should, like, absolutely right. should. And I've changed the way I do it, actually, now. Like, now I've kind of say it, like, like, I'm rich. Whereas I yeah. used to be, like, I want to be rich. Yes. Whereas now I'm, like, no, I am rich. Do you know what I mean? Like, I've changed Speak it away a little as bit. as if it has already happened. Yeah. Already, that thing. Yeah. Okay. I guess there's no wrong, or, like, right or wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... But yeah, I definitely manifested going to New York because I ended up getting a scholarship wow, with you my actually best friend went to Leah. New York. Yeah, wow. so I went to New York. As part of the dance studio. Mm, yeah. What were you doing? Training, dance. 
So we train. did like a dance course for three months in New York. Sweet. Yeah. Uh, and the rare paid for it and stuff like that. Yeah, rare paid for it. Okay, okay. Um, me and my course. best friend Liam, who's also a dancer. So yeah, Shout we both Liam. together. Shout out Liam. Shout out Liam. Love him. That's big, no, that's hard. But yeah, so we went there the year after I finished at Rare. So yeah. Mm, so manifestation works basically. Yeah, manifestation works. I, I think. <laughs> I spoke to my fr- my other friend again, Rosie, she, the other day, and she was like, "I manifested getting signed by an agency recently." What? And I said, "Why?" I said, "Okay." Like she was like, "I literally wrote in my journal a month ago. I need to be signed by another agency mm. in the next few months." Yeah. And she was, and she's very much like me. She's a scouser again, very spiritual. Um, but I think it genuinely does happen, and I think the only thing you can't do is rely on it to happen at a certain time. Okay. Because for me, it's like I'm I've manifested. I feel like I'm manifesting things that haven't yet happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know it's going to happen because you have to, you can't just be like, oh, I want this without putting the work in. That's a big thing. Do you know, yeah. You have to work, yeah. That's the main thing because people talk about manifestation and stuff like that, but the people that are not interested in the wishy-washy, maybe spiritual side, they're like, I'm about work. I'm about results. I'm about getting things done. You can't just put something out into the universe and expect it to happen. You have to work for it. Mm-hmm. God helps those that help themselves is a little thing. Yeah, 100%. So, you you know, have to. I read that still. But like you can't just, um, you can't want something. Without putting in the work. Without putting in the work, because it's not going to happen. So you mean it might, but I might. rarely. Yeah, no, but rarely. You, you have to, you rarely, success is rarely accidental. Oh, 100%. Success is rarely accidental. Rarely accidental, yeah. I, I agree with that. that. So like, Positive things are happening. We manifest what we want, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. But have surely you must have had times in your life as well where things have not gone to plan. Mm-hmm. Um, I know you're a big believer in self belief and shit like that, stuff like that. Yeah. Has there been a time where you've not had the support that you need, or things are not going the way that you thought it was gonna go, and how have you managed to overcome? certain yeah. said obstacles yeah um it's funny i actually spoke about this on a community call with my clients the other day okay and it was about i want to find out more about this community call yeah. that we do as well yeah from no a, definitely from a branded point of view definitely um and it was just about overcoming obstacles there was overcoming obstacles in your fitness journey but then there's overcoming a lot of life obstacles. Mm-hmm. And like for me, I've overcome a lot of life obstacles. Sure. Um, we'll go into, we can go into fitness yeah. after. But like life obstacles, I feel like, for example... Everyone deals with life obstacles yeah. in their own relative way. So yeah. please. Of course. I think for me, relationships has been something that has definitely gotten away in the way of things. Mm. Um. And I think that's why I'm so like, I just think because I'm very, I'm a very emotional person mm. and I think I never used to be able to control my emotions Okay. and understand so how to like control my emotions. you're like all in, you know, in a relationship's happening. All in. Yeah. Quite early on. Mm. And then you just, it's just, yeah, just like toxic environments. But like for yeah. me, I didn't really know about myself at the time. Yeah. So you kind of just. You're you finding yourself happen. whilst living with someone yeah. else. Developing, yeah. And growing. Exactly. So relationships, definitely. Um, injuries has always been a hard one for me because they can massively like, sorry, I've just gone on to the top here. I'm just trying to right. like say a couple of things. What yeah, injuries. Yeah. Situations yeah, in life that, you know. Just all different life things. Like I've yeah. never, obviously I've, I've lost people, but I've never, um, I feel like every single situation that's kind of come to me, whatever I've needed to approach it, I've always approached it somehow and overcome it. But don't get me wrong, like, I feel like you have to, you have to take times out and you have to feel how you feel. Yeah. Because you're allowed to have your weak months mm. feeling like, but it's like, how are you going to, I can't, I can't just sit and feel sorry for myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like I'm not really, since I've started dance college, I feel like I've not really been that person. Okay. Um, How are you getting over these heartbreaks then? What's the, what's the key to getting um, over heartbreaks, man? I don't get with anyone now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Single yeah. life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but no, yeah, it's boy. true. Like, I've literally, like, I've not had a boyfriend for so long because I just think I've needed that time to actually focus on me. And, like, I've definitely had childhood trauma 
chat. I can't speak. Chow, I've definitely had childhood trauma. It's all right. If you need to take a minute out, <laughs> then we're here for No, you. no, no. I'm absolutely fine. <laughs> definitely yeah. had childhood trauma. Not like anything like awful, just kind of my relationships with like family and stuff. Mm. Um, and I think you don't realize until you're going into relationships yourself mm. how toxic things around you can toxic. affect your future and your relationships. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, literally, even like at the beginning of the year, um, I had a I had a therapist because I needed to kind of go into that, mm. and it's helped me understand like why I am the way therapies, I am. Therapies therapies should be a positive. Oh, one hundred percent. It's a positive for me. Yeah, and I think I never used to like at the time. I didn't tell my friends. Yeah, I like, didn't even tell. I'm not definitely not told my mom and dad. So if they listen oh, to this, they'll know. Yeah, it's crazy. I, so you did that off your own accord. You went to find a therapist. Yeah, that's hard. You know, maybe more people should do that. Yeah, <laughs> no, they, honestly, they should though because I think. I would never rec- I would never sell, tell someone you need to go to therapy. Yeah. But I personally feel like every single person should at some point go to therapy. That's crazy. And I know that sounds like a really, um, probably like not a harsh comment, but quite a serious comment. But I think it's because everyone's dealt with something in their life that's definitely affecting them now. Mm-hmm. And I think even though you've got, you go to therapy, you don't just come out of it like, yeah, suddenly I'm okay. Mm-hmm. You still have to apply that and like keep learning. Um, but there's nothing better than going into yourself. I feel like everything comes from within. Any mistakes that happen, anything goes wrong in life, it comes from within, mm. in my opinion. Definitely. Yeah, it's quite a deep convo. <laughs> like, yeah, there's cool, a lot man. to go on about it. I mean, you say that, but I've, you say the um, community group that I spoke to you about just yeah. before this, yeah. the guy, is Trist, shout out Trist. Trist is goes by the name of the brand therapist as yeah. well. And Amazing. these guys in London, they speak about a similar thing on their podcast. They did a podcast with a musician called Cash. Yeah. And they were saying that these lot are buying each other therapy as gifts. Like it's beneficial. It can very it can help a lot of people. So it's something that I have recently become men. aware of. Yeah. That's from men. But these yeah. guys are trailblazers. These are these are groundbreaking people to be fair. They're, they're definitely setting pace in the field. I don't feel like a lot of people are discussing it. Mm-hmm. You're the second person. Yeah. So I'm, I'm happy to have that Amazing. raised as an issue here. Right? It's, it's, it's a big thing. Let me talk about the, you know, the branding side of things, the yeah. community side of things, because I'm a big believer that the future is going to be more community-based. Yeah. You know, the way that the world is changing, people are working from home, not going into offices as much. You've got AI coming out. Mm. People don't know what the job market is going to be looking like in the future. But I've got a little hunch. I've got my eye on the ball on a couple of things. That's my job, a specialist. I'm constantly curious. I like to look into things. Yeah. I have a hunch that the future will be community-based models, people like yourselves, going online, utilising the power of the internet to spread their message, spread their knowledge, and also bring people together in more of a decentralised way than perhaps the world has looked like in the past. So I would like to do this in the future. Like I said, I'm part of a community group as well. You have got people that you speak to every morning. How regularly do you speak to these people? And how did you work out that that was a model that could potentially work for you and do you think it's working like what do you think that the future is going to look like for brands personal brands people Mm. yeah what's what's good it's a really like very um big question I think because I feel like there's a lot that goes into personal brands and personal development Mm -hmm. and then building a community around it Mm. um for me it's like I have to work on my personal development to be able to bring that same energy out to my clients Mm -hmm. and people on Instagram who, whether they're clients or not, who follow me, um, follow me for a reason. So I have to give that energy and be my 100% self. Um, Or from an authentic point of view or from like a well-being point of view? I think a little bit of both. I had this conversation the other day. um, on my business, co- I'm not doing the business course now, but I've had a mentor for the past year. Okay. Um, which has been amazing, which I'll speak about in a minute, which has helped me with the community the side, yes. yeah. Okay. Um, but one of the um, one of the coaches on there, she's also a scouser actually, which is really funny. Right. Um, Lucy, she's amazing. But she basically said like, oh, I'm trying to think where I was going with this. 
the community. What was I just saying before? Like, how did you get to this stage where you've, you've built a community and being authentic? Oh, yeah, being authentic. Sorry, that was it. So I actually asked her, I said, how do you come across on Instagram? Say, like, if I'm having a bad day, which I don't have many, don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. But say if something's gone wrong, or, like, for example, this. But I was about week. to say, you break your wrist. Yeah, I felt really, obviously, I felt rubbish about it. So... This is before this happened, I asked her, but I said, how do you come across on Instagram being authentic, but also not looking like you're miserable? <laughs> mm. Do you know what I mean? Because I feel like for me, it's really, I can't always, I do share when I'm hard, when like this, obviously I've shared that I've not been happy. I've also shared that I've overcome it or overcoming it. Mm. And I kind of just said that to her. I said, how do you kind of balance it? And she, she basically said the same. And that's kind of what I do anyway. It's like, you can still have bad days and like be human. And that's where your authenticity comes in because you're still being yourself. But also the majority of what you post it and 99% of the time is always going to be in the well-being side and like health and like affirmations and me in the gym, et cetera, et cetera. So for that side of things, there's like two different sides. Um, and that's kind of how, even though that a lot of the, my followers aren't clients, I like them to kind of see that positive side. Um, it's, kind of, it's not even like I force it. I don't force it at all. I just generally am a positive person and I wake up in the morning, I'll be so blessed. Like I said to you, like literally when yeah. I got in your car, yeah. I'm so grateful for life. This beautiful weather is amazing. Mm. Um, and it's not something I have to force. Like I'll think of an affirmation or I've got an affirmation app on my phone as well, which is okay. amazing, <laughs> called I Am, if anyone wants it. Okay. Um, and if something comes up and I'm like, yeah, that's what I resonate with right now. And sometimes I'll post it. And I'll either post a selfie of me, me in the gym, or if I'm somewhere beautiful, like I'm going to Spain on Tuesday, from there I'll post something beautiful in Spain and be like an affirmation. And the amount of people that have messaged me and been like, me too, or thank you so much. Like so many girls especially have messaged me like, you're so inspiring, like thank you so much. And like, Mad. even like, sometimes they just need that little kind of pick me up, even though they didn't think they needed it. Yeah. So I think that's kind of where I built a community online. Mm. Um, be, by being authentic, but also caring about health. <laughs> yeah. How do you do um, the calls? Like, where do you where do you host these? Yeah, so calls. Can I get in on one of these calls? Like, what's going of course on? you can. I get a brand specialist pass. Of course you can. You're this, always welcome. Sound. So yeah, no, absolutely. You can always join um, if you're a client. So these community <laughs> calls are actually for clients. <laughs> okay, well, no, to be honest, I've been bringing. I've been bringing outside people in to talk. So okay. I started these community calls mainly when I went online. So um, tell us about clumsy. Um, yeah, so when I went online, went on in January. That was when you moved. When I moved to, to London, London, I kind of did everything at once, which wow. is a very big risk. But we did it anyway. Take risks. Because that's just life, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. have to take risks yeah. in life. Um, and because of my business program that I've been, I've had a mentor for the past year. And it's a real, again, that was a community. Prior to January. Prior to January. I had that in June. Yeah. Um, and I guess they're probably part of the reason why I moved to London and went fully online. Because I guess they kind of gave me that push to do it. Crazy. Um, but they kind of spoke about doing community calls with your clients, especially if you're online, because you're not seeing your clients in person. Mm. So it's like you have to, at least, it's like another check-in point. You don't just have one check-in on a Sunday. It's another day where people can just have a little community call. My clients can come on, speak to each other, meet each other online. Um, the community calls are kind of, I always, I usually lead them and I usually do like a presentation. So whether that's on nutrition, like the other day I did it about overcoming obstacles in your fitness journey. Um, mindset, like I had an amazing mindset coach, Zoe Dunley. She came, she's actually also on my business program. So okay. I met her through that. She's actually a mindset coach. What? So she came on and actually did a an amazing presentation about mindset. That's good. So it's like one community leads yeah. on to the other one as well. A bit 100%. like how I found the Leicester podcast studio. hundred percent. And it's yeah, no, literally. Um and like providing a space like this or providing a, a community call, whatever it is, providing a community is gonna help people because I had a client leave, um, he's done six months with me absolutely smashed it and I had a call with him the other day and he said I have I'm it's not even just he said the program's been amazing I've got what I needed to 
you said, but it's the community as well. You said people on that group, on the WhatsApp group are so supportive. Right. And you said, I've never opened up like this to people. Wow. And I'm like, do you know, like stuff like that, to, like even like, you can see it in my eyes, I'm getting teary. Wow. But like stuff like that, so I'm, honestly, I said, I'm so emotional. Well, it is emotional, um, it's emotional. It's but real. it is, it's like, when you're yeah, like, making people like, from a man as well, who's, he's literally a male, he's, I think he's 33. And he's changed his complete life in six months. And then he's saying that, the community calls and the WhatsApp group is something that's kept him going. And I'm like, how special is that to have a community? That's extremely special. Yeah. That's and I think that's why I have to keep doing them. Because it's like, I'm not going to stop that now. Like, that's that's my clients. And then, and also you can meet up with your clients. I haven't yet done this year and mm. it will be done as soon as this is off. Yeah. Um, but meet up with them and just like, even if it's just a drink. <laughs> like I went for breakfast with my client this morning, who's a friend now as well. And it's like, just having that community and making people feel safe, but also push them. A hundred percent. Yeah. When it comes to like community groups, definitely I'm a believer that the future is going to look like that. Joining communities, yeah. connecting with people through the internet, using the internet as leverage. So like you can put your knowledge online, reach people, excuse me, Super. you can put your knowledge online, reach people outside of your geographical area. I definitely know that the future is going to be looking like that. Like you say, you're changing lives, but also... I know that there's going to be this in real life, IRL, they call it, aspect of it. So you're talking about linking up and going for a coffee, but mm -hmm. potentially in the future you could have, like, you know, mass workouts or this wellness thing. and Yeah. It's amazing. I think that's the thing as well. It's like, um, I said to my client this morning, I said, I don't just want to be... I said I was coming onto a podcast and I said, part of the reason why me even like coming onto a podcast, I want to be worldwide known for like what I'm doing and not just for like me my ego or anything like that more for like what it's going to bring to people and help people so I think it's like having that you can have a small community yeah of course I'm always going to have my personal clients but also having that like worldwide kind of thing of it mm -hmm. um and like we need it's especially when you're doing something positive in the message needs yeah. to be spread the message deserves to be spread yeah and people deserve to benefit from yeah the stuff that you're sharing definitely and like you said about like ai and like social media and stuff like social media is so big <laughs> so it's like rather than using it in a negative way we need to use that as a positive mm. and like have things like a podcast like what you're doing is great like doing like sharing that online like people need to be seeing positive things because I was on the train the other day. Sorry, I always got off a tangent. Oh, please, I was enjoy. on the train the other day and the girl opposite me was just for a whole two hours scrolling on TikTok. Yeah. And I thought like, and she was laughing to it. So it was probably just funny like videos. But it's that cheap dopamine. That's, mm, what that's all it is. Cheap dopamine, dopamine here. short term gratification. Yeah. yeah, it's like a drug really. Yeah. And I honestly thought like, I didn't, obviously I'm not like judgmental in that way. I thought this is what social media is. For most people, mm. it's like scroll through TikTok for an hour, two hours, and then you literally find it's one one o'clock in the morning. I wouldn't know because I don't do that on TikTok. But I swear, no, a lot of people do. So many yeah, people do. So many people do. It's the creator versus consumer mm. argument. It what is. Do you want to be, or how can you strike a balance? So yeah. the girl on the train. Literally, what you just said though, like having a balance. Um, balance. Don't get me wrong. I will go on Instagram. I'll be scrolling sometimes, liking pictures, but a lot of that's on my fitness page because mm. I just follow a lot of gym people, <laughs> a lot of motivational people like Stephen Bartlett, like Mark Coles, like people who inspire me, like I'll follow them and just scroll. Definitely. But it's like, you have to like, at night time, my phone is at an airplane mode. An hour before I go to sleep, I'll put my phone on airplane mode. Okay. And shut off from that. Cause I think I can't, if you look at anyone looks at the screen time, they'll realise how much time they spend on something. Yeah. Um, not saying I've not done that because I definitely have. And sometimes you still do, but it's yeah. like you have to, especially at night, like the last thing you go to bed doing shouldn't be really things on like, things that could be negative on social media. Qu quickly, because I'm conscious that, you know, we've had a very rich conversation already. I want yeah. to squeeze yeah. in. Yeah. I want to squeeze in the last couple of things. And we've also got some questions from a couple of people that yeah. know you. I wanted to... Yeah. I promised, yes. I made a promise to the people that I'd find you a couple of questions as well. Yeah. But do you find, and this is something that I myself, um, you know, I'm, I'm dealing with as well. Mm -hmm. Do you ever find like social media 
can affect you in your personal life. You've made this commitment to creating content as well. You've made this commitment to leading a community as yeah. well. When you talk about screen time and stuff like that, has it ever like negatively affected you? I know people, you talk about Stephen Bartlett as well. Shout out to Stephen Bartlett, podcast diary mm -hmm. CEO. People that work for Google are saying they're even creating their own courses now for digital detoxes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. For someone like yourself whose business is online, becoming a thriving businesswoman who's yeah. benefiting from the internet and socials, how do you view the need for a digital detox? I think that's so... I think that's essential. I think for me, I've said this before to people, if it was up to me, if my business wasn't social media... Mm. And if I didn't need to have it on there, mm. I don't think I would. Because you do need to have it, what are you going to do? Yeah. Because I do need to have it, yeah. it's like it's finding, it's like you say, finding that balance. Is it okay to say to your community, like, I'm, I need a break, I'm having a day out, a day Absolutely. or two out as a creator? Is it cool to do that? Yeah. So I use as an example actually at the minute, like I've filmed all of my content already for okay, June. Okay, this is what we need to hear. This yeah. is the tactics now. So luckily my amazing brother does a lot for me wow. and he helps me. So he edits my reels and stuff on Instagram and does all that. Wow. Because he's just Mr. Brainbox. Smashed it. Um, someone who also inspires me amazing amounts. Um, shout out Dan. Shout out Dan. Smashed it. Um, so yeah, like I've already filmed stuff and I, what I'll do, I'll put it into a folder on Google Drive like my version, whether that's gym stuff, whether that's me talking, and then he'll edit them. So I'm going on holiday on Sp to Spain on Tuesday to see my brother mm -hmm. with my family um, for a week. And I'm my clients will know, like, I've, I, I set them kind of, what, time frames and stuff. And I'll always be on my phone for my clients if I'm away. Mm. Like, I say to them, if you really need me, message me. Like, that's what I'm here for. I'll always have my laptop with me. Because um, I usually, I'm a bit of a workaholic. I feel like I can't leave my business on its own for a whole week. So I have to set certain times. So in the morning, I might do an hour or two. Um, Thursday evening, I've still got my community call, a couple of consultation calls. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I'm having off completely um, because my brother's planned to take us out to like different areas of Spain. So it's like I have to, I do have a balance. Mm. And I'm very clear with my clients, like what I do. Um, I always have a Sunday off. I won't reply to anyone on a Sunday work related. Sure. Um, I mean, s sometimes I might, if I maybe couldn't work on the Saturday or whatever, I will maybe do, but mainly a Sunday is my day off. So yeah, I hope that kind of answered. <laughs> that, that really answers the question fantastically. Yeah. Like it's important to be online. It's important to leverage these platforms. Yeah. Do your thing, but there's a strategy and there's tactics that you can use. Batch creation, that's something that I'm aware of. Yeah. And I'd like to master and we can encourage people who are thinking about creating content, create it all on a particular day, schedule your post, make a yeah. content calendar. You know what you're posting in June already. Yeah. So that's sorted, that's patterned as they say. Yeah. You've sorted it out. Create on one day, make a load of stuff. Yeah. And then you don't have to worry about what you're going to post on a particular day. Exactly. That's fantastic. And also you can, which I didn't know about until recently, uh, Instagram, you can schedule your posts yeah, 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 and yeah, stories yeah. as well, which I literally did not know until about a month ago. So yeah, everything is now just scheduled. <laughs> Unless I randomly like had a day on the beach and I thought, right, let me post something yeah, to yeah. do with the beach. But like, yeah, generally like the reels. So you got to get organised. Yeah, you have to you're be gonna organized. Hit this game. You have to be, it's like. And reap the rewards. 100%. And for me, like coaching isn't about, just about coaching. There's so much more to it. There's marketing, there's social media, there's having a presence, there's tracking your numbers, there's tracking your business. Like, there's literally so many different things you have to be organised. And, like, time management for me, gosh, I used to be awful. Now I will literally shout out my mentor, colour block my time frames, like, reply to clients, client check-ins, purple it might be, like, film content. Like, literally, to a T. That's the only thing that's helped me, I think. <laughs> On a mental point of view, yeah. would you recommend investing in yourself, personal development, getting a mentor? I've got a friend. Yeah. Shout out, Cam. He literally said, if you pay, if you spend another penny on personal development, mm. I'm going to disown you. <laughs> yeah. No, that's such a good thing to do, though. Literally, like. Yeah. And shout out the other Cam. Mm. Cam can get rich from, um, he works with Tris as well from the niche group. 
people have been through this stuff, like they call it a personal development hole, but yeah. you don't really, you know, it's a bit of a dirty word. So I'm trying to, you know, find the benefits. Would you recommend it? You've done that yourself. You yeah. invested in a mentor. Mm-hmm. Should people do that? Person- and be wary at yeah. the same time. I don't know, like, can we have a balanced opinion from yourself? Yeah, I mean, that made me laugh about what your friend said. What, disown me? Yeah. But you don't know that I'm actually going to go ahead anyway. So, <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm not I'm doing it. So, you know, if we're still friends, then it's a real one. No, honestly, because I just think, like, I get it from your side because it's like, gosh, you invest so much in yourself already. Mm. And so many people say to me, like, oh, you do so much. For me, investing in yourself is one of the best things you will ever do. There's no reason why you can't invest in yourself. If you can spend money on, I don't know, a table in Manchester, China White. Yeah, like, yeah, this yeah. is just an example because I went there recently. Mm. Probably men spend a thousand pound, five hundred on a night. Taking you girls can spend, out, etc. Taking girls out. If you can spend that, you can definitely invest that same amount of money in yourself. Mm. Whether that's having a coach, a lot of coaches. I don't know what everyone charges, so I won't go into prices. But a lot of coaches average 50 pound an hour 40 pound an hour you can you can afford that because mm. you're probably spending 200 pound in the pub yeah do, do you know what I mean so I think that's just a little example but investing in yourself is always going to have whether that's a personal like development or whether that's your financial development whether that's your relationship development anything that it is you're always gonna see the benefits by investing that money into yourself 100% it's all I've ever done since all of, most of my money goes on investment on in myself or my business. No, I think so, yeah. it makes a lot of sense. So where can we find you on the socials and stuff? Can we get a little shout out? Yeah, so Hev.Fitness on Instagram, Facebook and TikTok. All of them. There yeah, I'm trying to think. Of, YouTube as well. I've got YouTube now, which is only recent. Um, but I have started oh, posting a lot more on YouTube now. Yeah, so if you are more of a YouTube person rather than Instagram, then that you'll see cool. everything on YouTube. So yeah. So I've got some questions for you. Yeah, let's go. All right. So Mr. <laughs> Mr. Go <laughs> get yours. Mr. Go get yours. Mr. Go get yours. Yes, Ty. Shout out, Ty. Shout out, Go get yours every single Shout time. Out, Ty. H, what keeps you going? How do you deal with success? Is what you do easy? Would you say self-belief is key? And how do you stay inspired to continue and improve? What was the first bit? What keeps you going? Kind of like the last one. What keeps you going? Do you know what's so funny, Ty asking me this, because he (laughs) keeps me going every single day on Instagram. Wow. And I spoke about him this morning when I had breakfast. I said it to my friend Shantae. I said, do you know Tyro? Yeah. And I don't think she did, but I was like, oh, no, no, she did, she did. And I said, every single day, go get yours, video. Crazy. He's like, good morning. Uh, It's Mr. Go Get Yours here, whatever it says. Yes, go get it. Yes, go get us. What are you saying? And like, I'm like, oh, my gosh. Every morning I see that on Instagram. Mm. And like, I think it's when I surround myself with people like him, that's what keeps me going. Okay. Because from I've known Ty for years now, um, literally years, he dances and he's an amazing PT as well. Um, and people just surrounding myself with bigger, what's the word? Bigger fish in a small pond. Okay. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, be a uh, small fish, be a yeah. small fish, sorry, in a big pond. Small fish in a big pond. And yeah. that's what keeps me going. Yeah. Like knowing that there's always better in me. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can't remember what else he said. He said how, do you deal, how do you deal with success? Like, how do you deal with all this? Stay grounded. How do you, you how know? do you stay grounded? Yeah, how do you deal with success? Is what it said. Yeah, mm. I like that. I think with um, I love that question actually because mm. I think you can take success as like two different ways. You can be really, you can do it and then go the nasty way, <laughs> or you can do it and use your success and like help other people. And be humble about it. And I think being successful isn't just... In the dance world and the PT world, being successful is not just about your what you're good at. It's about your personality. And I think for me, because I'm kind of... I stay grounded. I keep myself kind of humble. Mm. I surround myself with people who... I never really surround myself with horrible people. Mm. So I guess like even being successful and being around people who are successful, they're generally really nice people as well. And I guess that's kind of what keeps me... I'm like, well, I just don't know why I'd change my personality, I think. Do you know what I mean? Keep it humble. I feel like I've answered that. Keep it humble. <laughs> yeah. Is what, you, is what you do easy and would you say self-belief is key, which I think okay. we, we know. Yeah. Um, it's what I do easy. It's definitely not easy because I think it's you have to show up every single day. 
And when I've got clients saying to me they've had a week off or they feel rubbish, it's like, I get it. Because when life comes, oh my gosh, it comes. And it can it can hurt. Like life can hurt and it can be horrible. Um, but I think showing up is key and it's not easy to show up when you're feeling rubbish. Um, I always use this as an example, like time of the month for women is like, God, you don't want to show up at all. You're literally grumpy, emotional, you're in pain, like, but you have to. It's like, yeah, I think nothing that I do is easy, but I think for me, I don't like easy. I don't like, like anything um, that's easy. I like to have something that's challenging me and pushing me, um, and whether that's an injury like this. <laughs> um, like, why would I not train legs when these legs are still here? you know mm. like they're still they're still pushing me so I think yeah nothing is easy but I always seem to I seem to just do it um what was the last bit I'm so sorry my memory's is self-belief awful. self-belief mm. self-belief is definitely a thing um that is, is it key I think it is key self-belief is key for sure um you can go into a room full of people you can do in an audition for example and you can if you, as soon as you lack your self-belief that's it. You're done. You're, what you're doing every single day, like for me, I'm training every single day. I'm dancing every single day when I'm not injured. Um, so why would it be any different when it comes to getting a job or getting, being successful? Like self-belief is, is, is key because you've got, like, I've still got people that don't believe in me. Like I've had family members question why I do dance and question my career and what I do so if I didn't have self-belief how would I be here today like doing what I'm doing mm. yeah okay. I think that's like for me self-belief is just and he knows he knows I think he knows that as well mm. Ty definitely knows that because he will show up every single day whether that's whether he has to, whether people believe in him or not yeah and I think that's that's why I surround people surround myself with people like Ty and who are successful and show up daily because they know that it's them that's going to get them to where they need to be so yeah you know what you just answered sorry I just gave a massive answer I think you just answered answered the questions perfectly yeah Um, yeah it's fine shout out Ty though shout out Ty go get yours the last one was um, is Luke Luke Harper yeah Luke Luke wants to know why is Luke so strong it might be something to do with being on your eight week yeah, let's course, talk. So like, let's talk about your, your eight-week <laughs> course. And I love that. That is such what? a human thing to say. <laughs> yeah. um, do you know what? He's strong. He came to me. He just wanted to do an eight-week challenge that I promoted. Mm. And not he everyone... found you through copying. You're doing copying. So I knew Luke from the gym. Yeah. And I had done sports massage and copying. He had to come to me as a client for that. And then he's followed me for about a year now. Mm. Um, and eight-week challenge was fitness related I don't always accept people onto an eight-week challenge because I'm very realistic I think I would never put someone through an eight-week challenge if I didn't feel they were ready to do that Mm. um I'm not someone who really I don't promote strict diets basically so I would never put someone through an eight-week strict diet challenge if they didn't have a good relationship with food etc Luke is just he was already kind of like he was training in the gym I knew what it was like I was like yeah I'm, I'm happy for you to do eight weeks um and he's absolutely smashed it like he's lost body fat built muscle he's put on he's put on weight but he's looking big and he's looking lean and he's done that with his hard work he's got to the point where he's doing an hour on the stairmaster um and the reason he's done that like genuinely the reason he's done that and I said it to him on a call the other day Yes, my program has helped him. Yes, he's like really grateful for my program and stuff, but he has been so accountable for himself as well. And if you, accountability is literally key. Like if you aren't one holding yourself accountable, how do you expect someone else to hold yourself accountable? Do you know, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you can come to a program with me and I can try and hold you accountable. That's my job. But if you're not showing up for yourself and if you're not being honest with yourself, you're not really holding yourself accountable. Whereas Luke, for example, he literally does every single day. Like he shows up, he'll send me a picture of him in the gym, send me a picture on Stairmaster, send me a picture of his food. I don't ask him to, he yeah, literally yeah, just yeah. wants to do that. Um, and I'm like, that is what you call dedication. And that's why he's, that's why seeing Luke is results. strong in eight weeks oh, yeah. and seeing results. Yeah, yeah so, fantastic. yeah. The last question from, uh, this is from myself really. Okay. Like, so you where you are now, like say 30 years old, a little bit of a manist- manifestation thing. Let's go. What's life looking like? Oh my gosh. Absolutely. That's crazy. I don't really think that far ahead usually. Okay. 
which is a bit mad. I try and think like one year goals. Okay, so what's what's you know like what's the future looking like? One year goal, what we no, doing? I feel like let's do thirty. Let's do thirty. I feel like that's a good question. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think for me, one, I don't really want to be living in the UK. That's the first thing. Mm. But not because I don't love the UK. It's my home, and I do love it to a certain point. But I want to. Half the reason I do what I do is like the freedom of life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like my brother, for example, living. He still works hard, but he's living is. He's on the beach every day. Like, for me, I think there's so much more to life than just um, just England. <laughs> um, so that's one thing. I want to be, even if I do live here sometimes, I want to have places. Like, I want to be, I would love to be a very, I want to be financially free as well. Mm. That's a good goal. But I don't want to, I said it to Shantae this morning, I don't want to be financially free if it's not making me happy. It needs to be with something I love. And, like, for me... Dancing and the job I do now are two things that I absolutely love doing. And I think the only way I'm going to be financially free is if I keep doing what I'm doing and inspiring other people. So eventually I want to have like my own dance school, gym together kind of thing yeah. at some point. Mm. Not necessarily be based there, but I want to be able to provide that in Nottingham. There's still, there is amazing things in Nottingham. Um, I'm part of Take One at the minute and they're amazing. Big up Take um, One. Shout out Take Shout One. Out Take One. Um, there's JME Dance Company, which I used to be with. They're also amazing. And I think I just want to bring kind of my essence to it at some point. Um, Cause yeah, I guess everyone's different. So it'd be nice to kind of have my own little thing in Nottingham at some point. Um, and yeah, I guess just, just be happy, I think, and just be like actually content and just, Good aim. Good yeah, aim. and hopefully have kids and stuff one day. Definitely. And share that with them, you know? Yeah. That's amazing. That's my future goals. <laughs> keep, keep doing what you're doing, keep inspiring. Yeah. And thank you again for thank coming you so on. Thank you so much. Pods. Thank you for having it, me. Appreciate it. There's a lot of questions, but yeah, it was good. Wow. Love it. We're Thank bad. you. Thank you.